بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم و بهی نستعین ثم الصلاة والسلام على سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفى محمد و على آله الطیبین الطاهرین Dear sisters and brothers, salam alaikum. I pray that you are well, inshallah. Um, it is very nice for me to have another opportunity to be with you on such a special night. And uh, I pray that, inshallah, we manage to make the most out of it together. Um, out of the grace of God. Inshallah, we'll try as best, as much as we can to do whatever we can, but at the end of the day, we should all know that we need to rely on God's grace and mercy for what we do, no matter how hard we try, it's never going to be enough. May God, inshallah, from his own grace, um, give us. Let's recite a, another salawat. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجه Another salamat please الله Are you ready? Should we begin? The discussion that I thought may be nice to have together in these nights is around the interesting, strange, weird, difficult times that we are in. There are many aspects to what makes tonight Sorry, not tonight, these, um, these times that we are in difficult, strange. I mentioned some of it yesterday. The culture is very weird. You see things being taught to children, to people in the wider culture that a few years ago was impossible to imagine even. I don't think any of us, maybe even 15 years ago, could predict what today looks like culturally. I'm talking about the wider culture, right? Not the Muslim community, the wider culture that we live in. It's interesting times, no? Like sometimes they even show, for example, these parody um, or f comedy sketches from 10 years ago. And when they try to make a very silly situation 10 years ago, you compare it to the world we live in right now. Like that's, that's our reality. 10 years ago, it looked like a parody now it's like, no, that a lot of it is already happening. I don't want to open it up. You know what I'm talking about because time is short. In addition to that, there's also what's happening with technology. I've seen a lot of people are now feeling in terms of, for example, what's going to happen to my career? What should I teach my children? I remember a few... Weeks ago, I was speaking to this brother. He said, I kept pushing my child to learn programming. And now you hear, for example, there's this software that does programming in one day. But there are many versions. Well, what if my child says, Dad, you forced me 10 years to learn something that now uh, a computer or software can do in like one hour, basically. So. Interesting things are happening there as well, right? A lot of people are worried about their jobs, the decisions they need to make, careers. Is it going to be safe? What's not going to happen? These are the kind of times we're living in, and you can feel the uncertainty, that anxiety is kind of in the air. A lot of discussions are about this in places. People are thinking of moving elsewhere. Where do I go? So I'm hoping, inshallah, in these few nights, we'll talk about things that will help you in the decisions you want to make for yourself and for your family. 
And also to give you a little bit of safety not to worry too much. We're going to be fine. And maybe even more important than that, not just that we're going to be fine, we're going to be much more than fine. Inshallah, it's going to be a very beautiful time if you play it well. If you know how to deal with these times, you realize you will thank God every day that you're born in such a time. Please recite another salawat. One thing which is very important is framing. How do you look at a situation? I want to give you a very silly example that how framing of a situation is very important. The example goes back to almost uh, 25, 30 years ago when I was five, six years old. I remember one day my brother who is three years older than me, so he must have been around nine and a half back then. My brother and my mom went out, I'm at home, and they come back and I saw my brother is hiding something. Obviously, being the naughty person I was, I'm six year old by the way, so don't judge. I tried to figure out what is it that my brother is hiding and giggling. I saw, oh, he's holding a smarties. I immediately realized crime has been committed. My, brother my mother took my brother to the shops. She bought smarties for him and they didn't buy for me because there was only one pack of smarties. I did what every wise six-year-old would do. I started shouting. I said, this is unfair, mom. You don't love me. You hate me. And then I started doing the same with my brother. Reza, I hate you. And all of that. Then my brother Reza started crying and went upstairs. I don't forget. My mother said, Javad, do you know? Because remember, we're tiny people. Though. I'm six, he's nine. He said, Reza, with his own pocket money, which back then, مثلاً, maybe a month, we would get two pounds. He said, with his own pocket money, he bought this pack of Smarties for you. The reason he was hiding is that it's your birthday next week, you idiot. He didn't want you to know. And he's so hurt now because he wanted to show you love and you hurt him. Now, what did my mom give me that suddenly everything changed? From a scene of a crime that they're going against me, plotting against me, this mother and her son, it changed into, oh my God, they were showing love to me and it's my birthday next week. What did my mom give me that changed this feeling for me? Just how to look at the situation. She changed my framing of it. She said, no, it's not that we are plotting against you. We are preparing to show you love for your birthday. Why is this so important? Because if you don't know how to frame the times we are living in right now, you will make a lot of mistakes, like the six-year-old Javad who started shouting at his mom. You may shout at your God, you may shout at yourself, you may shout at your children, if you cannot grasp what is happening right now. It is true that life is going to get much more difficult physically outside. Things are gonna get very, very tough. But it is very important to know that this is actually going to be the best gift God has given you. If you know how to look at the times we are living in, every night you would go to sleep thanking God that you are born in such a time. Imam Hussein alayhi salam in Dua Arafim, he explains that for every single person God brought them to the world at the time in which was correct for them. He says the moment of your birth was not an accident. It was chosen. If you are born in such a time, it means God has given you all it takes not to survive in this time, no, but to even thrive. I think that deserves a salavat, no? Yeah.
yesterday I spoke a little bit about what is this change of framing that we need to do. Because most of the people in the culture, what you see is nervousness. Even the ones who give, want to give advice, it's anxious advice. If you don't invest in these companies by this year, you're done. If you don't do this, you're done. If you don't... All of this nervousness is because people are only looking at the difficulty, not knowing why is the difficulty good. I said yesterday a little bit about why is this time so special, especially for believers. God is trying to help humanity go to the next level. As long as life is easy and challenges are not too much, unfortunately, we don't try hard. We don't use all of our resources. It's very interesting. A few nights ago, we were invited to uh, my wife's uncle's house. I was sitting with one of our relatives, and he gave me something. He said something which was so beautiful. I was like, yes, I'm going to talk about this this month of Ramadan. You know what he said? He said, when I start a new business, I was a brother who has a few businesses. He said, when I start a new business, on purpose, I don't try to raise a lot of funds. I asked him why. He said, when there's a lot of money and you want to start a business, you are not at your most creative. Because a lot of the problems that comes, you throw money at it and you solve it. But he said, when money is a little bit tight, it makes me so creative. I'm like, oh, I need to solve this problem. And he says, that's the part of a new business that I enjoy. Do you see what happens? He says, when you have less money, you have to rely more on your internal resources. You bring your creativity out. You bring your decision making out. Most of the creations of humanity have come as a result of limitations. Things were tight, we were like, we have to come up with something, and we did. But so far, up to this point in history of humanity, whenever we reached a difficulty, we looked for a solution outside. All of our discoveries have to do with around us. This time it's different. No matter what you create outside, it's not going to solve the problem. So what is it that we need to discover? We need to go inside ourselves and discover who we are. That famous self-knowledge that for 14 centuries everyone talks about and most people don't know what it is. Do you see what's happening? Insan is going to be forced to look within and discover who he or she is. And the day you know who you are, oh, that day you will celebrate like you cannot imagine. This is why this is the best time. I remember a child in our family, in our relatives, she had to get, um, what do we call these braces for the teeth? And she was very upset about it. She said, I have to get braces. I'm not going to look good for a while. What if people make fun of me? How come you didn't get braces? And I told her something which I want to tell all of us now. I mean, God's wisdoms are scattered in our life. You just need to look. I told her, I know it may be difficult for you to go through these braces. And it's true. I didn't do that. Right? But... After you go through the braces, your teeth is going to look much more than mine. Mine, maybe it's like 30% different to the ideal situation. So I'm like, 30%, it's not worth it. Yours, the doctor said, it's 60% far from the ideal. You have to go through it. But in a matter of one year, your 40% is going to be 100%. My 70% is going to remain 70%. So who's the winner now? For the rest of your life, you're better than me. What does that show? Sometimes when things get difficult, as a result of that, you end up in a better place. And you may say, oh, why should I be forced into going to a better place? No one forced us. 14 centuries, humanity had time without pressure from outside to realize who they are. We didn't take it. You know that line from Imam Ali alayhi salam, Saluni qabla an tafqiduni? 
ask from me before you lose me? Do you know we had 14 centuries to ask him? Do you know we didn't ask him? What's your question from Imam Ali? Tell me. 14 centuries we had time. What did we ask him? All the time we went and we asked for, I don't know, what did, did we ask for knowledge? Did we go to his books and be like, give us a solution for humanity's challenges? 14 centuries, this line, Saluni, Qabla, and Tafqiduni was echoed every year on a night like this. No one ever wondered, what, what did he know? It's not that God wanted to force us through difficulty to go to second level. No, he gave us 14 centuries of time. Inside, there's much more in this world. You don't want to know. And we were like, no, we're good. We're fine. So now God was like, oh, you are missing out. So what should we do? Maybe we need to change the world around you a little bit till you finally go back to what Imam Ali has to teach. So that Salun Gablan Taft Biduni that Imam Ali alayhi salam said, believe me, in a couple of years, you're going to be so desperate for it. We're all going to be going to the door of Imam Ali, knocking, Imam Ali, teach us, what did you have? My child is going through so much pain. Imam Ali, what did you have to teach me? I cannot handle the pressures of life. Imam Ali, what did you have to teach? Life is getting so difficult. I am starting to lose my faith in God. And it seems like pressure needs to go a little bit high for us to go and realize these things. Now, why am I talking to you in this series? Because I want to help you before you get desperate to go and get these gems out. Everyone, I promise you, in the next few years is going to be desperate for teachings that can save them. You can either wait till you're desperate or I'm saying let's start from now. This is the passion behind this lecture series. I'm saying there is so much in our tradition untapped yet that not only will give you what you need for your life, but you can also share with people around you. Please recite the salawat. One of the features of Qiyamat is what? You know, in, how do we usually refer to Qiyamat? Yawm al Qiyamah. Correct or not? What does that mean? The day of Qiyamah. Why is it called the day of Qiyamah? Even though we know that is a shamsu kawwirat. It has nothing to do with daytime. Do you know why God calls it Yawm al Qiyamah? Because as we go towards Qiyamah, things become clear. I mean, at night, I could have ketchup on my face, no one would see. But in daytime, when there's light, everyone would see the ketchup on my face. The reason Qiyamah is called Yawmul Qiyamah is that on that at that time, and increasingly as we go towards that time, things become clearer. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. Insan is going to be one of the things that experiences Qiyamah. And not just on that day, we are going towards Qiyamah. We are already within the early stages of Qiyamah. What do I mean by that? Let me elaborate with this example. 300 years ago, as a sheikh, for example, I could come here and tell you that I am the most spiritual person in the world. I have the faith of a scholar. I could say this 300 years ago. And inside me, there could be so much shirk. There could be so much, uh, you know, impurities. There could be so little faith. But would you know? No. You didn't have anyone to compare me to. You didn't know anything about my life. Life was so simple. I could fake it that I have faith and go at home and live a different life. But now what is happening 
life is increasingly going to become so difficult that if I don't have that real faith inside me, it is impossible to fake it anymore. In a few years, I'm promising you, very few people would be even able to smile because life is going to get so difficult outside that you either need to go inside and use the faith you have to be able to calm down or if you don't have anything else, it's going to show. There is no more room to hide things. If I don't have faith, it will show. This is the feature of the times we're going in. Insan can no longer pretend to be something that they are not. We're not completely at Qiyamah yet, so there's still things we can hide. But it's going to, as we go on, become increasingly difficult. I gave you a few examples yesterday. If you tell your child that my child with the remembrance of God, you will find peace, Hundred years ago, you could say that and get away with it. Now your child says, Mommy, why don't you have peace? What does that mean? Qiyamah. Either you have faith inside or your own child will make it expose that inside is empty. Allah, there's nothing wrong with this. So again, don't get scared of this. This is amazing. You know why? Because Baba, it forces us to become better people. It forces us to get those real things. And the real things are very worth it. The real things will be so worth it no matter how we get there. But what I want us to achieve is let's voluntarily go towards that. I, in front of all of you tonight, want to say everything I say is fake. I have nothing, God. If on the day of Qiyamah you want to expose me, my hands are up, I have nothing. But I'm ready to receive the sooner you admit that with God, the sooner we can go to second level. Let me give you another example. Last Muharram, not this Muharram, sorry, the Muharram before that. I was giving a lecture and you know my intention always is to bring people towards God. And because I feel like Ahl Bayt, their version of God is the best. So for me Ahl Bayt are so special. Because I feel like the version of God you get with ahl Bayt is spot on. So I gave a lecture. This is my intention. A sister called me after one of the nights. And she said, Sheikh, your lecture is taking the youth away from religion. I said, did you see that? Or is that what you think? She said, no, no, that's how I feel. I said, you realize my intention is not that, right? And I gave her an explanation of why I spoke about that. Few months went by. What happened? Gave a lecture on Muharram to try to bring people to God. Sister calls me, says, you're having the opposite impact. I asked her, have you seen anyone? She said, no, it's what I think. A few months passes, she calls me. She calls me, Sheikh. There was this person among our relative, a young boy who left Islam. And we took him to all different scholars here, there, even in cities of knowledge, no one convinced him. Once by accident, someone was listening to those Muharram lectures, he was passing, he listened to it, he said, if this is Islam, I want to come back. The same lecture that she said is taking people away from God brought her own family members back to God. Why am I sharing this with you? Because I'm sharing I'm telling you that we need to get ready for the times we're going in and you need to really know how to address religion, understand religion in order for you, your family to be safe. Some of the things that you may even right now, I mean that sister, she's not a bad person, kid. But her alert system in her mind was giving her wrong feedback. She thought something is bad, which actually ended up being good for her own family. But I'm saying at this time, as we're going forward, it's so important we recalibrate our internal systems. 
Otherwise, you may make so many mistakes. In this lecture series, we're trying together to recalibrate our systems for the times that we are about to face, and we're actually already there. Please recite another salawat. If you want to bring your mental system from the past into now, and even in the past, it's level one. It, and even in the past, there were people who had different systems. But if you want to bring that system from before into knowing how to understand and act in this time, you're going to make very serious mistakes. I spoke a little bit yesterday about this. And Tonight, I want to elaborate on that. What did I say yesterday? I said, my beautiful friends, before you could have a closed system. Baby, think about it. Even you don't need to go that far. Well, Allah, when I grew up, مثلاً, when I was five years old, there was no internet. It may seem crazy. But I'm saying, well, even if not for you, go two generations back. There is no internet. There is no phones. It's so impossible. It's so possible to have a closed system. You decide what your child reads. You decide what your child watches. And then they continue going and you're like, I'm very happy. Everything's working. I tell them what to memorize. They memorize it. For many of you, if you go two generations back, your parents were probably in a place in which all the people they saw had the same faith at them. So... There was no chance of this person meeting any new ideas. The closed system worked. Son, don't look at that. If I don't want to look at that, I don't have any way to do it. There's no internet, there's no phone. Where do I even go? If daddy takes it away from my life, I will not look. So it worked. But if you want to bring that system into today's world, you're going to ruin your child. You're going to even ruin yourself, I said. Now if you tell your child that memorize whatever I'm telling you, these are your beliefs, your child is also learning something else. That I need to listen to whatever authority tells me. Truth comes from authority. Hope today at home, daddy and mommy are the authority. Tomorrow my child goes to school, teacher becomes authority. And I have taught my child, listen to whoever has authority. And so... My child in school listens to the teacher and takes all his knowledge there. Then he goes to university, the lecturer becomes, or her peers become the authority. She takes her beliefs from that. No, no, can you search Munajat Shabani and then get me? I want the Arabic text. Anyone who, you have it? Thank you. The brother has it. Thank you so much. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد واسمع دعائي إذا دعوتك واسمع ندائي إذا ناديتك وأقبل علي إذا ناجيتك In Munajat Shabaniyeh, Imam Ali alayhi salam teaches us something so beautiful. He says, Insan, how many years have you been looking for your God? We went here, we went there, we read this book, listened to that lecture, did this, did that. At some point, Imam Ali says, Baba, whatever I do, it seems like I can't find the way to you, God. So in Munajat Shabani, what Imam Ali says, he says, God, I came looking for you, I couldn't find you, you come look for me. I can't get my voice to reach you. You come and hear my voice. Look, he says, وَاسْمَعْ دُعَائِي إِذَا دَعَوْتُكْ I don't see you, God. I don't know how to get my voice to you. You come and hear me. وَاسْمَعْ نِدَائِي إِذَا نَادَيْتُكْ It's like, one of the features of this dunya 
You know how he said, as we go towards Yawmul Qiyamah, things become clear? Now we're in Layl. It means it's dark. God is all around us, but we can't see him. So at some point, Imam says, just sit down. You've looked for God enough. Just sit down now. I know you can't see him, but just say, God, you come and find me. You come and hear me. وأقبل علي إذا ناجيتك فقد حربت إليك ووقفت بين يديك مستكينا لك says God I'm running towards you I mean, get the feeling Imam is making in this monajat. He says, Baba, isn't life difficult? Why aren't you tired of people not understanding you, not listening to you, the pressure, life outside, sometimes even family, and I want to take it even a step further. I don't know about you, Allah, I'm tired of myself. Baba, till when jealousy, till when anger, till when being a person who sometimes shouts, sometimes hurts, sometimes wants things which are not good. Ya Allah, I'm tired of myself. So Imam says, from everything other than you, from wall, from my desires, from anger, from my jealousy, from everything, even from myself, I want to escape to you. فَقَدْ حَرَبْتُ إِلَيْكَ I'm escaping, I'm running towards you. وَوَقَفْتُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْكَ مُسْتَكِينًا لَكَ He says, I'm standing before you, showing that Baba, I'm مُسْتَكِين. مُتَضَرَّعًا إِلَيْكَ God, please, God, please listen to us. Rajian Lima Ladaik Thawabi. God, I want the good that's with you. When I look at myself, there's not that good. Honestly, all of us look at ourselves. Bobo, this is a limited being. This even hurts his own loved ones. Says God, the I'm tired. I want the good that's with you. Raji and Lima, Ladai Kathawabi. I know with you, I'll be beautiful. When you're there, I'll be nice. When you're there, even this limited person acts well. I want, I want a life with you. What mafi nafsi? God, you know what's inside me. وَتَخْبُرُ حَاجَتِي You know what I want. Bibin Hala, I've never told people that your hajats are bad. All hajats are important. But there's this one hajat which if you manage to get it tonight, everything else is sorted. And that is once and for all to experience a life with God. Do you remember a few years ago this short clip became very famous, which was such a beautiful video in which our lovely reciter was saying that, lecturer, that Imam Ali, مثلاً, the fairness he showed even to Ibn Mulja. Do you remember that video? Ibn, مثلاً, if you look at the advice Imam Ali gives about how to treat Ibn Mulja, isn't that so crazy beautiful? Someone went to kill him. Imam says, be fair to that killer of mine. You go to Imam Hassan, this Shami person, this person from Sham comes to Imam Hassan, starts swearing at Imam Hassan, alayhi salam. Says, you're this, your father is this. 
ببین کر سزا این فرانت آف امام حسن کر سز هم کر سز امام علی علیه السلام How did امام حسن treat him? He said, are you tired? I think you've come from far. How can we help you? Do you want to come to our house? امام حسین علیه السلام the same thing. هر ابن ریاهی how much he hurt امام حسین. Hur has that line which is so powerful. I mean, this may be an emotion a lot of us may be feeling now. Hur ibn Riyahi regretted very late. He was the person who actually stopped the caravan of Imam Hussein on the day of Ash. Yani, sorry, in those days, yani before the day of Ashura. If it wasn't for him, maybe Ashura wouldn't have happened. Later, as we're approaching the final time, he regrets it. But he knows what he's done. He knows that even though now he has regretted it, دیگه he can't make up for all the things that he has caused. Still, Imam Hussein is going to get killed. Still, Hazrat Abbas is going to get killed. Ali Akbar, Ali Asghar. خب. He calls to Imam Hussein and he's very ashamed. He wants to join, but he's like, what about all of this that I have done? You know what Imam Hussein tells him? Irfa ra'sak. Hold your head high. Okay, how? How Imam Hussein? Hope. Yes, he's apologizing, but that's not going to change anything. You're still going to lose Abbas. How are you forgiving him? What is inside you, Hussein alayhi salam, that you don't even for one sentence blame her? Say, we forgive you, but know what you've done. What is inside this person that doesn't even for one sentence after her regrets shows him that what he did was wrong. Your back now, hold your head high. Irfa' ra'sak. Hello, my child makes a mistake. My wife makes a mistake. I make a mistake. Dige, I cannot forgive. Even if I forgive, you've seen the way we forgive. I'm not judging us, I'm making a point. Even when we forgive, you know how we forgive? I will never forget. I would have never done that to you. You hurt me a lot, but okay, uh, this time I'll forgive. Or sometimes I'm Kassan, we don't forgive. What is this thing inside them that made them so beautiful? It's their relationship with God. Rajian lima ladai they are so filled with love, with connection, with God. There's so much beauty every second coming that no matter what you do to them, nothing but the beauty comes out. All of the hajj we should ask for, ask for all of your hajjat. I'm not going to stop you. I'm going to ask for all my hajjat too. But one thing I say, ask for this one to God, make me like them. Wallah, it's possible. Huh? In the few nights that's in front of us, I'll show you. It's possible. ahl Bay didn't come to tease us, to show, oh, we're living like this. You can't. No. They're showing us, baby, what we have. You ask God to give you too. You're still thinking about that person who hurt you 10 years ago. I get you. You know why you can't heal it? Because there's not much love coming towards you. On your own limited resources, someone hurt you 20 years ago, you're still going to need a lot of work. But there's a way for you. I'm not judging you. There's a way for you. One second, Enson, one second, you can fly and let go everything anyone ever did to you. In one second, it's possible. Ask that from God. And how is that possible? That's when you realize who you are. That's when you realize what kind of gifts you can get from God.
if we don't do this, I'm so sorry, but I'm, wallah, I feel bad if I don't tell you. If you don't make this relationship with God, whatever you do will not help. Imam Ali alayhi salam sent one of his companions to go and check on the Khawarij. The Khawarij are who? One of the people who fought Imam Ali and خب دیگه at the end we saw what Ibn Muljam did. Imam Ali sent one of his companions to go and check on them and he gave him some advice. For example, don't talk to them with Quran because they have their own interpretation of Quran. Talk to them from the uh, seer of the Prophet. Although when that companion went and came back, you know what's one of the things he said about them? He said, till Sahar or something like that, or at least late into the night, they were doing munajat to God. S crying at night, munajat, 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 praying all of that. And a while later, they go and attack Imam Ali alayhi salam. Even if that relationship with God is not set right, you can even do monajat and then go kill Imam Ali alayhi salam in the name of God. Wallah, nothing we do will help us if this real understanding of who we are is not there. They say when Shemr did monajat to God before the incident of Ashura, when Shemr did munajat to God, people would gather around him to listen. Oh, Shemr is talking to God. It's so inspiring. Let's get inspired and cry. When that real relationship with God is not there, when you don't know who you are, even munajat in the hand of a dirty person like Shemr becomes useless. But when that connection with God is there, even one act you do, like what, for example, Imam Ali alayhi salam did. One act of Imam Ali alayhi salam, it says, Afdal min ibadatil. It's better than the worship of everyone. When that relationship with God is there, one action of Ali is better than the worship of all people. It's all about realizing who is God, who am I, what's happening. On a night like this, we have lost a very special person. A person who represented what kind of life is possible from us. A person who wanted to save us from the likes of Ibn Muljam and his friends, who even prayed and worshipped and did not change. This is the real thing that happened tonight. And ask God for this. God, I want Ali's understanding of God, Ali's understanding of prayer, of a'mal, so that I can change as well.